I can hear you screaming as I'm doing this, going, ah, I'm an artist, I'm a designer, I don't want to know all about math. Uh, or maths, as we call it in England. I don't know why. I don't know why we call it maths, and in America you call it math. I don't know. It's just one of those kind of you say tomato, I say tomato things. Um, anyway, uh, I think I think it's quite interesting to know a little bit about maths, and and I know most artists become artists because they they hate maths, <laughs> they hate doing the arithmetic and things. Uh, but I think uh, I think it's quite it's good to kind of know about other things in the world, and uh, and the more you kind of learn about things, the better I think it is. And so really open up your mind to this. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, something interesting. So what is this? One to one point six eight. This is the golden ratio. Okay. And uh, I don't know what's that bit, but let's turn it into an exclamation mark. That was a kind of a mistake. And this is Fibonacci, and he lived in about uh, about 1200-ish, something like that. And he he went off. He was a bit of a mathematician, and he went off travelling. He went to Arabia and India, and he found out that they were using the number system like one, two, three, four. And he thought that is so much better than one and two and three and one V, which is what everybody was using in Europe at the time. And this is difficult to count in. So he came along and said, this is a really good thing. And so he came up with this book called The Book of Calculation, which is called the Liber uh, Abaci. Which I, suppose, I don't know what Libra free. I don't know something like the uh, uh, A B A C I. I suppose that's abacus and Libra means free. The free counting. I don't know what that means. Anyway, so in the middle of all this, he comes up with this thing called the Fibonacci sequence. And what you get is you start off with the number zero, to which you add the number one. Then you add one and zero together, and you still have one. Okay. Then you add one and one together, and you have two. You add two and one together, and you have three. You add three and two together, and you have five. You add five and three together, and you have eight. This is where it gets difficult for me. You add eight and one together, and you get five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, this is why I was no good at math. I'm useless at counting. Thirteen and eight will be eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Did you see my strategy there? And this goes on and on and on to infinity. And the what what you get is between these numbers, the ratio between thirteen and twenty-one is one to one point six eight. So thirteen. Plus eight, so or rather, the the ratio, the, the eight, thirteen and eight, that ratio that makes twenty one is one to one point six two six one eight. Does that make any kind of sense at all? Why is this of any use? Well, I'm going to show you in my next video. Now I've completely lost it. Here we are. It's in front of me here. I'm going to show you how to make something like this. Uh, I think this is a bigger one. Oh, I've made I've made several of these. Hang on. <laughs> I don't think this is the good one. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show you how to make something like this. And it, uh, what, what it does is, 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 if that is one, this is 1.68. Okay, so this is um, a golden ratio kind of ruler. And what happens is, let me take a famous painting. Okay, this is a lovely painting here called The uh, Lady in a Boat by one of my favourite artists. He's uh, Jack T. Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, Tiso. Tiso is his surname. And what happens? Look, when you start dividing this up, it becomes quite spooky. I'm going to draw on the top here. Look, that's where her eye is. And what else have we got? Like here. Look, there's this definite point. Uh, look, her ring is on that line too. What else do we have up here? Uh, anything up here? It's kind of the the, the knot of the bow. Uh, anything else down here? It's kind of, there's a definite kind of mark, a definite point there. And if you draw a line down here, this side is one, this side is 1.61 and my pen is leaking all over my hands. Um, 
what happens if you go the other way? Uh, I thought the dog might be involved, but it's not. But let's have a look. It's kind of there. This is a bit wobbly. This uh, it's not the best thing, but it's ah uh, dripping. It's kind of there and kind of down here. And then if you take vertical, I mean that is just so obvious there, isn't it? But if you take this vertically, what kind of position do we get? That's going to be there. Uh, and it's kind of here somewhere, which is kind of on a line. It just kind of just kind of makes sense. But I mean, so, some t most paintings are kind of you're going to find this. But I think that line there is just so definitely obvious that he's he's chosen that line, or he just does it instinctively without thinking. What about Botticelli? This is another one of my favourite painters of all time. And there you are, look, that bang on there. What happens if you come down a bit, look, all that flower. Uh, there you are, got that point there. If you take it the other way around, uh, well, what do we have? It's kind of just the edge of her body is right on that line. It just kind of makes sense. And the north and south, what do we get if we do that? That's, I don't know, there's going to be something on the, along there. It's kind of that line there. And if you do it the other way up, what do we get? I would have, th I, see, I would have thought that would be, but I could, if this is so, so dodgy, <laughs> you're going to find that that is actually there on the golden section. And what about Mona Lisa? <laughs> uh, I looked at this earlier, actually, and there's various different ways of looking at it. If you look at it from her, kind of, um, where was it? Kind of from the top there, top of her head. I don't know, there's nothing really there obvious, uh, except we've got that line in the background on the golden section. So, um, what's it all about? It's, it, it's, it's just very pleasing to the human eye and the human brain to have these kind of things on there. And it's just, this relationship between that width and that width is just something that the human brain really likes. I think you probably find... Yeah, there, look, you see her face is on the, on the section there, it's kind of down there. So I knew, I knew there'd be something, and that probably crosses here where those hands cross. It's, it's all kind of symbolic, it's all kind of relationship. And if you're kind of trying to decide how you're going to do a design, it's really, really interesting to start with a golden section and work out from there, and it, it will just be pleasing right from the start. So there we are, that's my first little talk about the golden section. The next one I'm going to show you how to make one of these and how it comes about, how it relates to everything. Uh, I like you to make things, I'm going to show you <laughs> things like that. And it's good to make things if you want to draw things as well. So uh, in the meantime, keep thinking about magical numbers and the universe and space and <gasps> some magic, things like that. And <laughs> keep coming back to the Shoot Rainer Drawing School on YouTube, where we'll do lots more of this kind of stuff. In the meantime, keep uh, drawing, keep practicing, uh, keep uh, splitting things up into the golden section, and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.